Hi, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. I trust we've been having a wonderful day today. Like, we've been learning from the various sessions. And in this session, we're going to be talking about the future of building, or rather, building the future of Web3. And our focus will basically be on Africa, because, of course, we're all Africans here, except maybe um, Christian. But we're going to be talking about how it's the whole Web3 space, how it's going to look like in Africa in the next five to 10 years, using the eyes of um, the various experts we have here. So quickly, I would want each of our panelists to please tell us, like, they should briefly explain to us their role in the Web3 space and what aspect of their work they believe that is much more important in the Web3 space. So let's start with Arin Sin. I get Good, good, good. Hi, everyone. My name is Harrison Obiefuli. Currently, I um, oversee continent-wide marketing, um, brand management, and communications for BitGet in Africa. BitGet is a top five um, derivatives exchange. Um, before BitGet, I was the PR and marketing manager for FTX. Um, I also work for um, a number of Web3 um, brands um, especially from a marketing point of view. Um, what's the second part of the question? Like what aspects of your job is most important in the Web3 space? Um, I, I mean, I, I'd, say, I'd say the advanced user experience capabilities of Web3. Um, the fact that as marketers, we can reach more people. We can reach more people with our content. We can reach more people with our marketing, with our um, brand campaigns. Um, I think it's just that user um, advanced user experience capabilities is something that is really interesting um, um, and for us, especially from a marketing um, point of view. Okay, thank you. So, Tofeni. Yeah, my name is Tofen, Tofen Kama. I'm the principal investor for Mexico Ventures. Okay. I'm based in Dakar, though we have a full coverage of Africa. Um, so, we invest. We are like a pioneer of investing in uh, Web3 uh, in the region. Uh, we have a number of investments either directly in Africa or global platform which are operating in the region. Companies like Goldfinch, which probably many Ugandans already know, with uh, the likes of Tugende. Uh, we invested in Ijara in Cameroon, which is one of those best wallets in the region. And I can cite probably three or four others. We also have a lot of investment in Web3 that are targeting the climate sector. For example, companies that are providing MRV using blockchain ledgers to uh, provide climate change, climate um, um, carbon reduction uh, solution globally with application in Africa. Thank you. Yeah. Wilfred? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wilfred Odero. I'm an investment analyst at Metaversal. Metaversal invests in the infinite stories of our culture, and that uh, takes two verticals where we have a venture studio that takes IP in part and whole to develop full metaverse strategies, but we also have a specific investment arm where we have the largest NFT corporate collection, so we are heavy into backing Web3 creators and a infrastructure portfolio of just over 16 companies, so we span the gambit. We also incubate companies. Uh, my role at Metaversal is primarily focused on infrastructure and currently um, quite interested in the intersection between Web3, AI, and how that evolves digital culture. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is, <laughs> you know my name. Um, I've been in the blockchain, Kenyan block, uh, blockchain scene for about five years now. I've worked with different brands and organizations in a marketing, PR, and business uh, basis. And currently, I represent uh, Ngeni Developers, which is uh, a fully-fledged web, web 3 developer studio. We've trained uh, over 35 uh, developers from Web2 to Web3, and we provide services to companies all over the world. And um, this is very dear to me because last year at the Africa Tech Summit, um, the conversation was that um, Africans are not producing. We are consuming a lot of products from other countries. Even when we are building African products, we are outsourcing. And uh, what we've been able to establish at Ngeni, we've built over 45 uh, decentralized apps. 
and um, trading boards and the likes. And it shows that Africans can build and we are capable. Other than that, I'm the founder, as John mentioned, I'm the founder of Kenya Blockchain Ladies DAO, which is a safe space focusing on um, helping Kenyan women bloom in Web3, establish their careers, find their paths. Yeah, that's me in a nutshell. All right, thank you. Hi, I'm Chris Delvis. Uh, I'm actually born in Jamaica, but I'm 30% Nigerian, so. <laughs> I'm the founder and CEO of Phone Bank, and what we've created is the easiest on and off ramp to and from Web3, uh, targeting mobile-first cash-based economies using prepaid airtime as a medium of exchange. So literally, all you have to do is pop up your phone, regardless of the network, and now you can have access to cryptocurrency anywhere on the continent, or practically anywhere in the world, where you can get access to a prepaid GSM phone. Right, thank you very much, Chris. Well, since we have like powerful experts in this session, so it's actually great because we're going to be tapping in various aspects as it all affects their role in Web3 space. So I'm going to be starting with Wilfred. Like, we all know the Web3 space, like Web3 itself has been a buzz since last year. Like, everybody wants to go into Web3. And the picture that is being painted out, like someone said there was like, when you come into Web3, you're going to be making money from it. Like, so I just want you to like, tell us the current state of Web3 and the future potential of Web3 for everyone. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think to just paint a picture of what Web3 is, you have to juxtapose it with Web2, which is what I think we're all here to dispose and uh, move away from that paradigm. And <clears throat> a good way to think about it is what Web3 does for creators, just to paint this picture of what the promise of Web3 is and why we're building all this infrastructure. So in Web2 land, the big companies monetize your attention. The share between the big companies and the creators, the value share is not equal at all. Yeah. Web3 is saying that we're going to flip that paradigm on its table, put the creators first, empower them to actually go to their true fans, go to their true creators, no intermediaries, and actually build deeper communities. You hear this word come up all across Web3. Is that we want deep communities. This is a community of builders. This is a community of this. That's really the ethos where we're taking, we're taking power back and actually putting uh, the means of production, the value creation back in the hands of creators and everyone else that's participating in this ecosystem. So I think if you take that just juxtaposition, you're quite able to understand why people are even interested in building Web3. It's quite the countercultural movement and I think it's here to stay and uh, anyone that thinks otherwise, regardless of recent market conditions, I think is, is widely misplaced. So quite excited to see what people are building, especially in Africa, because really we have the biggest scope to benefit from this. Because now an artist, like we're the first institutional investors in Asinachi, and Nigerian digital artists. Uh, previously, you'd have to go through traditional art museums, go through collectors, and by the time his artwork reaches the US or Europe, he's had to go through so many steps. Yeah. That's been cut out to where we can just go directly to him, back him, and and uh, be a part of that journey very early. So I think that's just one example, but this is gonna happen across all the ecosystems. I'm sure everyone building on this panel is, is targeting some aspect of that movement. And that's really what I think the promise of Web3 is. It's, it's this departure from what we've come to know as uh, big tech into where we're building open, open source protocols, open source tools to empower the creators and, and the users of, the, of uh, and the creators of value. All right, thank you very much. Um, so Chris, since you're actually a founder, like a founder of a project that helps to off-ramp and on-ramp in Web3, so I'd like to know from you, like, how do you see the interaction between traditional finance and Web3 evolving in the future? It's a great question. <clears throat> As I was uh, flying in, I was, you know, in the last uh, 24 hours, I've been on three continents and as I was, you know, flying in from Europe, uh, I am always impressed about the geographic footprint of the continent and each of the, the countries. And I think one of the big challenges to, to scaling businesses, Web2 businesses, is this concept of interoperability. Yeah. Um, and that you go from, you can only get, let's say you're the biggest in Nigeria or the biggest in Kenya. Well, that doesn't translate 
across the continent because you essentially have to recreate that business you know, from a core infrastructure standpoint in every single country you enter. And so you, where you have a bunch of subscale Web2 businesses that really, you know, if you want to be big tech in a Western sense, you need to be Pan-African. Well, I think sort of the opportunity for, for Web3 is that type of interoperability across the continent as well as global too. Like, you know, I go back to like, how come M-Pesa can't be a global money, yeah. mobile money standard, yeah. right? Um, but I do think, you know, there's obvious reasons in terms of how it was architected, but I do think that is the future of um, uh, the development efforts in terms of the, this new category of uh, technology. Okay. All right. So, like, still on you. We have so many problems right now for people that are trying to, like, build in Web3 space. Like, could you please help us identify some of those opportunities, um, some of those problems, and how we can actually get opportunities to still in the Web3 space? So, you know, when, when people think of Web3, you know, they might think about just the financialization of it or the, like, trading cryptocurrencies. But, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, I even think about our company this way. One of the things that really interested me in, in, um, in what we're doing is that, uh, airtime, prepaid airtime, literally the billing credit uh, that's locked in your carrier account is, it's a digital asset, right? You think about like all these other digital assets or uh, siloed systems of value that exist, yeah. right? And so what, what phone bank is and what many sort of web three companies, and this is to me the, the genius of DeFi, is that everything's a market, right? If you can find a counterparty for it, and it's digital, or you have a way to tokenize it, you can now trade it or make it interoperable uh, from one state to another, but also literally one country to another. And so whether that's like NFTs is, a, is that sort of first application, but an NFT, it, it's not just art, it could be a ticket, yeah. right? <laughs> one of the events, uh, I'm not gonna name names, but uh, when it, the, the ticket sale, um, it, you could only get it uh, if you had Apple Pay, right? Okay. Like yeah. that locks out many people that were, were local. Yeah. Uh, you know, so these are the types of opportunities that I think that we have to try to solve for whether it's creators, whether it's financial services, mm -hmm. whether it's just basic software, yeah. you know, like I'm a, if you're a Western uh, software provider and I want to unlock one of the largest continents in the country, but I can't get paid, well, that's a problem. True, true. Like, I think, taking it back to the NFT part, there is this new type of NFT, like four apps, that's proof of attendance protocol, where, for example, we're all here in Africa Tech Summit. Like, some people have gone into creating technologies in Web3 space where if you attend an event like this, you get to receive one of those NFTs, like those four apps, which you could put on your bio, like in your profile, to show that, oh yes, you're here in the Africa Tech Summit. And maybe later in the future, you don't know how that could actually be a means to actually gain an opportunity from someone. It's also a way which you can connect with people. Because right now, I think it's still a new technology that not everyone actually understands how it sure. works, but it's actually, actually going to be what, something very great for us in the future. What I might even add to that, though, is that, to your point, it provides what you know web3 or the blockchain is it's really a next generation accounting system an yeah. over the top uh, interoperable accounting system and it allows for the monetization or the accounting of behaviors yeah. right where if you think about those set of behaviors that you might want to incent you know for attendance for you know planting trees uh, there's all types of, i think there's you know uh, of uh, economic, behavioral, social activities that now can be accounted for with this new technology yeah. uh, for the benefit of, uh, of our society. Okay, thank you very much. So now let's quickly go to Yvonne, since you actually work with developers and I'm sure you see new projects that are actually coming up in the space. So in your own opinion, what are some of the like, most exciting and innovative projects or applications that are currently being developed in Web3 space? Um, <laughs> I'd say, uh, personally, come from a financial economics background. So money, and as much as we look at uh, blockchain beyond cryptocurrencies, um, 
what excites me most is how uh, blockchain has revolutionized yeah. money. We say fix the money, fix the world, yeah? According to Bitcoiners. <laughs> uh, I've seen, we've been talking about Africa Free Trade Agreement for a while now. And I'm seeing a lot of um, innovations coming up, built by Africans for Africans, to break the financial borders that were put. I'm seeing a lot of products being uh, built to help the remittance issue. Uh, yesterday we were talking with you, sir, and we were seeing how it's difficult, it's easier to go to Dubai yeah. than it is to go to Nigeria from Kenya. And it's these days when I look at how how far we've come. Uh, it's so easy to send money from Kenya to Nigeria, Kenya to Uganda, Kenya to India. At the press of a button, I just go to my Binance Pay, boop, money has gone as fast as it goes to my Mpesa. Now I'm seeing products like uh, Phone Bank, I'm seeing Kotani Pay, I'm seeing Bitnob, and it's, it really keeps me motivated to keep pushing on in this ecosystem. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So let's go to our PR person and our marketing person. Like products keep coming up. And I'm sure like, if not for the fact that we mentioned Poor App Now, I'm sure not everyone here knows there's something called like proof of attendance protocol where you get an NFT to show that you were in a place. So from your own end, like from a marketing and partnership perspective, how do you see the Web3 industry growing and reaching mainstream adoption in the next five to 10 years? Um, I think every brand in the world is going to be a Web3 brand um, eventually. I mean, we already see major players, major brands, companies like, like Nike, um, mm -hmm. um, the Gucci, the Reddit, everyone from a media platform to um, a consumer-facing brand is entering Web3. So I see more of that happening um, in the future. Um, I also, I mean, especially I also see that happening um, within the local context, within the Africa context. Um, I see the likes of Flutterwave and Paystack having um, an active Web3 presence, not just offering, servicing Web3 um, um, customers or Web3 um, brands, but, also, but actively having a Web3 department or Web3 um, facing product. So that, uh, that is what I see um, in the nearest future. Okay, so like bringing it down so people who really don't know how to know about these products. How do you feel that these Web3 products, how can they bring themselves out more? Because right now, if we're being honest, aside the whole payment part, not everyone is aware of the other technologies that are in Web3. Like, where do you think these people are going wrong with their marketing and how do you think they can actually improve on it? So, so Web3 suffers from a branding um, problem. Web3 suffers a branding problem. Um, well, I mean, the reason why a lot of people don't want to play in this space because they don't understand what it's all about. Yeah. Um, we like to use technologies that is very native to us. Yeah. Um, if you see a crypto and crypto person talking, if you're not in the crypto space, you would not you understand the damn thing. Um, so we need to sort of um, conquer that first. And we can conquer that through um, education, simplifying our technologies, ensuring that um, our local speak, our native speak, um, is, is open to the common man. Um, another thing I see doing is that, I mean, we, we the us Web3 crypto natives were too clickish, but so we, sometimes we behave like cultists. Um, sure. We protect, we protect our team, uh, I mean, you know that. Um, we, we like to protect our team, so I see, I see uh, if we're able to also conquer that. Another thing that I, I've started seeing is, I see a lot of um, native Web3 products being built that would onboard um, a lot of web, web two companies or brands into Web three. Look at what Cassava is doing, for example. They're building a platform where um, Web two companies can come and reach more Web three um, and platforms. So I'm um, able to, to, to conquer some some of these problems. I think it's very easy um, for Web two people to, to not just understand what we're doing, but pick interest in and what we're building in Web three. Okay, thank you. So it's more of like. Um, interacting more with people in the Web2 ecosystem and trying to simplify things to them so that their products, they can bring it on board and then it will go mainstream. And it's actually easier that way because right now, instead of saying we're going to build more project, projects or more products from scratch, it's best to leverage on existing projects. Think aside Casava Network, that's also something I noticed that Polygon, 
that they are doing, where they are making sort of like strategic partnerships that already established with two products and they are now helping to onboard them into the space and they are living on their high which they've already built based on the products that they have. So now back to like our investment principle. So then, I'd like to know from you, like, what do you see as the key investment opportunity, like the key investment opportunities and trends in Web3 space right now? <clears throat> yeah, actually, I'm both, let's say, um, an investor and an African. So, like, what I'm saying here is really covering what I feel as an African when I'm in the, in the Web3 community, plus what we see uh, from the different projects that we are seeing coming mm -hmm. into us. Okay. So, I, I want to con consider those, 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 those two angles. Uh, I was also a former developer in the uh, Web3 sector. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the head of Shaman Pesa with mics and so, like in the old days. So I'm kind of an, an OG in the sector. Um, <clears throat> so, so in this like beer market, from an investment perspective, there is probably nothing better than this time to find good projects. If you really want to look at interesting projects that have a significant impact in our communities in Africa, mm -hmm. you probably won't find a better time than this. At peak uh, DeFi, it was really frustrating for us yeah. because you could not dis differentiate what is good from what What's is not good. Yeah. Everyone seems to be successful. Yes. Everyone seems to be super smart. It's only at, the, at, at these markets, at this time, where you can really distinguish what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. So it's kind of simpler for us because simply the, the, the kind of lack of uh, rush uh, filters uh, the market for us. Yes. Now, I have a message though for, 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 for African builders because I feel like this is also a moment where we should actually build. And I'll, I'll come back to that a little bit later. Um, the reason why we think as an investor, uh, this is really the time to build is, especially in Africa, I make a difference between Web3 and Web3 Africa. I just want to be clear about that. Like, Web3 has four or five main, like, um, K, K pilots, like consensus, ledgers, uh, tokens, and things like that. Every once in a while, the global uh, crypto goes kind of wild with one of those. Yeah. There was a moment where everything was about tokens. Yes. We had the ICO period. Yes. There was everything about um, smart contracts and DeFi. We see with yeast farming how it ended up. There was a moment where everyone wanted to build a, a blockchain and forget yes. about Oh, tokens are not really interesting, and blockchain is important. Yeah. All those things are really like um, trends that are coming from the from from, from 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 the global community. I wish we we Africans we actually took our own trends, yeah. took what is really really challenging for us on the ground, and built and not follow other. Yeah. So the best example I take is I was here in Kenya in 2008 when Mpesa was like really really at the very early stage with the team, with Michael Joseph and the team. I think it's like maybe 70,000 70, customers or something like that. At that moment, no one was looking global. No one woke up here in, in Kenya and looked at the US or Europe or somewhere for, 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 for example. So I think for crypto, we should be doing that. We should not be looking at what is happening in the US. We should be actually building what is really, really usable for us here. So that was my, my, my simple message. Now, from an investment perspective, um, the way we are looking at crypto is this way. To me, crypto is essentially the computing platform for relatively complex ecosystems. Yeah. Like everything that I see in crypto, from consensus, uh, ledgers, all these things are actually tools that are allowing to combine uh, an ecosystem where you have more than three, four, five uh, players together to maintain trust. Yes. Now, the, 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 the way we're looking at this is every time we go to a sector, we try to look at what are those key pilots that are needed to build solutions. For example, we have one of our investments who is providing liquidity, global liquidity for local startups that are, for example, uh, that need asset financing. Mm -hmm. If you are building, um, let's say, an EV vehicle company today and you need asset financing, it might take a lot of time after going after bank to get to get to get financing. All of a sudden, you can actually get that liquidity from 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 the web, and and then people who are taking those loans are actually using crypto without knowing so. We like that. Um, we also see a lot of trends right now, 
around, around regional trade. So I'll just take a, a few minutes on regional trade. I come from West Africa, I'm Senegalese. And before the colonial period, before the arrival of Europeans, we had what, were, what was called the salt trade. The salt trade was anywhere between North Africa to, to Lake Chad, down to Senegal and Mali. Okay. And salt was like the equivalent of Bitcoin now, literally. You could use salt to trade. You could also use it as a utility for food. It was used also to conserve products. Salt was so important that it was actually valued as much as gold. If you had one kilo of salt, it would be valued as one kilo of, of, of gold. Just an example for people who are looking at how Bitcoin might actually evolve in the future. Yeah. So during the colonial period, um, we came with now frontiers, languages, and currencies, and all those natural like trade uh, circles and, and channels have kind of disappeared. But if you look at population themselves, if you let them, they will reconnect. Yeah. Like somebody will take something from Senegal and try to sell it all the way to Chad, no problem. Yeah. Uh, we can't do that today because of all these different, or you have to go through tons of uh, currencies and frontiers and all that. I think crypto is today the best way to resolve that. And we've seen a, a lot of companies today in Nigeria, in Ghana, and so on, which are actually powering regional trade. If you want to sell product from Ghana to Nigeria, you don't have to go and queue and wait for, 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 for change. Um, we are seeing also a lot of companies, unfortunately, a little bit less in Africa, which are leveraging crypto uh, for a climate. A lot of companies that are, for example, using blockchain for uh, um, a, more, a, more, a more transparent, for example, verification system. Uh, though the projects are happening here, the verification is happening probably globally, but most of the projects are happening here in Kenya, in Africa, where you have a lot of forestation, a lot of supply chain starting from here. Uh, sadly, we are not seeing that much. I only see like one company that is doing that in Kenya that came to our pipe. So these are, I would say, like the main three trends that are exciting for us today, global trade, original trade. And I think that crypto probably would do a much better job in regional integration yeah. than probably policymakers. Okay. If, I, if I just follow the trend that I'm seeing today, uh, what I'm seeing is more encouraging than all these different treaties that I'm seeing <laughs> being signed yeah. between different countries. Yeah. Um, crypto for climate, uh, and then obviously global liquidity available everywhere. Okay. Thank you very much. I think my key take from here is the very first point he made. Yeah, it was like, if you need to get into any products in the blockchain space, this is a perfect time to go in. Absolutely. Because right now, I think the entire market is down. We're just recovering at this point. So if you know you need to invest into anything, this is the point where you'll be able to identify the solid and products from the ones who are just there for, for the profits. Yes, so right now is the best time to invest into any form of infrastructure in the Web3 space. So I think right now I'll go back to our builder, our, key, our founder of Enfone Bank. Like, since you're a founder of the Web3 fintech company, like, can you share your experience in building and growing your business in the Web3 space? Like, what advice would you give to others that are looking to enter this industry? Uh, listen, listen to your customers or your stakeholders. Um, you know, one of the things that we do from, we did from the beginning and it's, it's been a key driver in our product development path is, you know, we, we have all types of direct communications channels, whether it's WhatsApp, now we're big in Telegram, and we talk to our customers every single day, each one of our developers, you know, that it, it's like, oh, you have a, a question about the product, how it works, talk to a customer. Like, and so, because I do think that's how you get rid of friction and you find the problems on the ground and, you know, and it's out of necessity for us because we have uh, a global team of people that are looking at this. So we need um, re real time interaction. And so don't, you know, so maybe the other aspect side of that is don't build a product uh, in, a, in a vacuum. Okay. All right. So you said listen to your customers. I think in the Web3 space, that's something that is very major. Mm -hmm. Like, the products you see that they, are, they pay attention to their customers or their consumers, they are the ones that are actually doing well because they will drag you on Twitter. 
Like Twitter is a place where people in Web3 space, you always find them. So if you're building something and your product has one tiny niche, I think the whole FTX problem, for example, what blew it up was Twitter. Initially, when the news was coming up, for people, like when so many newsletters were posting about like the findings and all, not so many people paid attention. But the moment someone dropped a thread on Twitter, like going in depth, explaining things, the next thing everybody knew about FTX, even people were not in the Web3 space. Like I could recall how many people, like they reached out to me, like I hear this thing is happening. Like how did you know? Said there is Twitter. So if you know you want to build in Web3 space, make sure that your socials, they are tight and make sure your product, you pay so much attention to it. Because if you're doing, your product is not um, sustainable, if there's any error with it, your, co your consumers, your customers, they're going to come for you through the social me media because it's very easy. It's a decentral, I would say it's a decentralized space right now. Because everybody has freed like the freedom to express themselves and whatnot. So um, to Wilfred, yes, how do you see the role of decentralization and blockchain technology in the future of Web3. And could you please discuss the potential benefits, benefits and limitations to these technologies? Yeah, so decentralization for its own sake, I think as we've probably seen in certain occurrences with some protocols going down due to poor incentives may not be the ultimate goal, but certainly decentralization as a pillar to most of these solutions that are being built in Web3 are truly necessary. In the case of NFTs, for example, we know that uh, the storage of data is quite a, a key issue. Yeah. So if you want to have a permanent inscription of what it is that you're putting on, on the blockchain as art, can you guarantee that A, nobody can take that away mm -hmm. uh, from where it's currently sitting? And B, do you have sovereignty to decide if at all it does get taken off when that occurs? And if you wanted to live in perpetuity, do you also have that option? Well, currently you don't have that anywhere in the traditional uh, Web2 space. So you have the emergence of companies like Arweave who invested in that are enabling permanent storage in a decentralized manner. This in turn allows creators to then choose how long they want their art or their creations to live on on the blockchain without going through any intermediary or asking for an opinion. Yeah. Now, this is a promise that uh, Web3 has and decentralization in particular brings to this ecosystem in that not just for storage, but this could go to payments, this could go to what other folks are building here, to where if you want to build something that benefits your community, your user group, and empowers you economically, you don't have to ask anyone for permission. You just build it, and you ultimately get to decide how that's deployed, who gets to use it, and uh, what impact it can have. So decentralization is quite candidly bringing back power to you, you and I, the users, the consumers and the builders. For far too long, that has not been an option. And as we'll see very shortly, regulation is going to come in with a heavy hand, as we've seen in the US. Uh, certainly, that's a risk, and it's going to continue to be a risk in many jurisdictions. But I, I do think it's something that's worth fighting for. And even locally here, lobbying for your current governments on their policies on CBDCs or banning certain types of transactions, I think we need to be quite vocal because, frankly, uh, Without decentralization, we get into a very bleak picture because I think the trend for Web2 right now is very centralizing and does not pay uh, a future that I personally would want my kids to live in and yeah. hopefully not you as well. So decentralization certainly is a core pillar and we should ultimately defend it wherever you come from. Speak to your governments, lobby for it in whichever small way you can. We must preserve uh, decentralization because ultimately there's a lot that rests on this. Yeah, I think that's like one of the use of DAOs that has um, decentralized us in most organizations. Like, there are some projects that are built right now, but they are built like in form of DAOs, where if things are not going so well, the members of that particular um, DAO or that particular community, they have the right to speak up through votes to say, oh no, like this concept is not working, it has to be taken down. And of course, they'll have to pay attention because it's the community. Like, it's decentralization. No one is in control of anything at this point in time. Or like our regular Web2 life where you could be working in a company and everybody knows, like, it's very obvious that, okay, let's see what the execs they are doing. They are going to the opposite direction and no one is able to speak up because they are scared that, oh, they could easily get fired or maybe, like, no one is going to pay attention to them. But Web3 is, like, making this a saying, no, now everything is decentralized. You have the opportunity to speak up. If, um, let's say, they are wasting money, 
they can vote off to tell them, oh no. And of course, they'll have to pay attention to the community because the community is what, like, going to bring the face of the project or that product outside. It's a community that is going to be representing you. And back to building products, since everyone, they are always, whenever they talk about Web3, let's be honest with ourselves, people like to focus on finance. They like to talk about payment. So, like, someone said something about supply chain earlier, like a person wants to see what um, Web3 holds for supply chain. So, Tofin, I'd like to know from your own end, like, as we look to build the future of Web3, like, what do you believe, or rather, how does Web3 impact um, identity, data privacy, and as well as Internet of Things? Yeah, I, I'd like to say that um, Web3 is just a tool. Um, Yes, it started with Bitcoin in the financial sector. Yeah. But um, I like to divide it in, in primitives. For example, the token was created just because the Bitcoin people, our community, didn't want to rely on, on fiat. fiat. So it yeah. had to find a way to incentivize the network. And that net, uh, uh, incentive had to be like away from, uh, from fiat. So if you know that, you know that if you are building a system or an app or a, a project where you don't have really that like strong incentive, you probably don't need a token. Yes, sure. Right? If you are building, for example, a system where you just need to prove like transparency, like a, a, a global ledger, you probably don't need the whole package. So I'd like us Africans, when we are looking at um, the future of Web3, to separate those different primitives and just pick what we need and roll it to what we, what we are building. So I think that the future as a tool uh, the way I look at it is that in, in, in financial services, it will probably be rolled into most of the Web2 companies that we are seeing today in the future. Like you will see things that are common today in, in Web3, rolled in any other new bank naturally. Yeah. It doesn't need to be all the things that are like consensus, tokens, and all those things. It doesn't need to be all that, just what you need. Now, the, the same way, you can actually see that can be also rolled out in other sectors. For example, we see a lot of uh, usage um, today, even today, as, a, as an investor, of uh, Web3, for example, in supply chains. It's very, very, very efficient in something that is called like inserting. Most of the brands today that are looking at us uh, having a better transparency, either for regulation or for net zero kind of objective, they want to know how the coffee has been built. Yeah. And they want to have full transparency all the long. And then they actually, they're, they are looking for projects that are using uh, web, some part of the web tool for that. But they don't need the whole web tool. They just need a few, right? So I think that the future is probably going to be utilizing web tree as a, as a tool set in every other sector okay. that we have in the economy. And now when it comes to Africa, I think that I, I see a lot more like, for example, um, uh, like similarities between the way web tree has been built and the way our economies work. Come in Kenya, the transportation is mostly informal. Yeah. What is an informal system? It's a system where a, a number of players are operating on their own, and there is no one who is centrally operating them or managing them, mm -hmm. right? That's basically the model of transportation that we all know in most African cities. That's already decentralized. Yes. Web3 is just the computing part of that, but that's already happening online, offline, sorry. You see that in retail? You see that in even finance, like for example, community and groups. So I think that for us Africans, the future is just taking what we already know from, from, from Web3 and putting it online in every sector where it's relevant. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. Um, back to Ari. Um, I think I just need you to tell us like, what you believe are the most important steps that need to be taken to ensure the success of Web3. Because everybody wants to build something in the Web3 space, and everybody wants to get involved. Like, what do you think are the steps that need to be taken for globally, not just in sense of finance, like all areas, if someone wants to build in Web3 and to ensure the success of it? I, I think it's, it's first off from community. Community is very important in Web3. I know we like to sing that a lot, but um, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is a truism. Um, so before you come into the Web3 space, you must understand that entire dynamics. How do, you build a, how do you build a community? Not just how do you build a community, but also how do you engage the community? Yeah. And there are several use cases that we can learn from, from brands that have been successful with their um, go-to-market strategy for, um, into Web3, and those that have also failed, from the likes of Nike, 
to the likes of Porsche that just had um, 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 a campaign cool that flopped. Um, I think that's the first, um, first step um, and show that um, your, your, your Web3 play is um, heavily community driven. Um, another thing would be the kind of products that, 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 that you're building in Web3. Currently, we suffer from a lot of, um, how do I say, product problems, if I can, if I can use that word. Um, currently, the product that we have in Web3 are either problematic or too clanky or some other problems. And if you see, I've, I've been in sessions with some of these brands, and many times they just want to tap into the Web3 audience without yes. taking the time to build out a product yes. with actual use cases. Yes. So as soon as you can solve two of these key issues, understand that this is heavily community-driven, and ensure that your product solves an actual problem. And you're not just coming into Web3 because everybody's coming into Web3. I think once you're able to solve those steps, I think it's, it's easy breezy. Yeah, true. Like, everybody now wants to build. They just, exactly. they just want to build. And what they are building, when you check, it doesn't really have any use case. And that's why most people are still pushing back on Web3, because at the end of the day, it's profit people just want to make. But you're not coming to solve any problem. The, the, and yeah, the VCs is also, I mean, I know many of them are here. They also have a role to play. Because, I mean, last year, you didn't even need to show any vibe or any good product. Yes. As long as you just mentioned yeah. Web3 in there your no deck, they just dash you money. <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> so we need that's to true. talk about that's that, true. Uh, Like, I, I you mentioned something true. about, sorry? I think that might have been a slight exaggeration. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Like, you mentioned something now about community, like how builders need to understand that the Web3 space is community, community. So, train it to Yvonne, who is actually the founder of um, Blockchain DAO Ladies in Kenya. Like, I'd like to know from your own end, like, what role do you see the wider community playing in the future of Web3? And how can individuals, as well as organizations, get involved and support, support the growth of Web3? Yeah, that's accurate because uh, we know the success of any blockchain project is backed by a strong community. For example, Dogecoin, which is a meme coin with absolutely no utility, <laughs> as well as Shiba Inu. All of them are backed by strong communities, as well as Bitcoin, of course. So for sure, communities, uh, I started my career as a community manager. and. At first, I thought it was hilarious coming from school with a degree and I'm over here typing on a telegram group. And it was so important that you get paid for it. Yes. So literally, you're getting True. paid to text. <laughs> so communities are very um, crucial in any Web3 project. Also because we can't do as a marketer, we really can't, um, we, don't, we, we try and avoid creating so much uh, negative attention. We don't want to do billboards or uh, TV ads when we are marketing crypto because it creates an avenue for scammers or um, negative projects to come in and also do the same. So we do mostly community-based marketing like meetups and telegram groups and Twitter, of course, as you had mentioned. So um, uh, what I think the wider community is just to, first of all, as Harrison had mentioned, educate yourself. Um, implement uh, payment systems that involve crypto. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mini maxi. Uh, Bitcoin, I fully support Bitcoin. Um, and also, uh, I, I really want to push the government. We had the previous session talking about uh, governments and how I remember Ali Khan had said, you know, we expect governments to catch up later, but honestly, blockchain has been around for 1.5 decades. <laughs> it's time for the government to catch up for real, and we do need regulation in blockchain and crypto. And if there's a regulator in the room, um, most of us blockchain uh, people believe that we do need regulation. There was a pro the previous plan panel was what the FTX. <laughs> it was talking about how uh, uh, how regulation is important in crypto and especially in Kenya where we've, we, we, we hear a lot of scammers, pyramid schemes dressed as blockchain. So um, I think at this point, um, education, regulation 
and also implementation, um, use, your, use the crypto platforms, use Web3 platforms, and eventually I believe it will become part of our day-to-day -day life like the internet as the dot-com bubble people thought it would, the internet would die. Eventually blockchain will be part of our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, like, I'd want to give a secret to everyone, like the builders that we have here. If you're looking to come into the Web3 space, or you probably already have a product, but maybe you're still um, finding it difficult to like scale, community is very, very important. The big secret is, if you know you're a Web2 person, like I know when it comes to marketing in Web2, people love to use billboards, like you said, or TV ads, but in Web3 space, it's totally different. People barely watch TV. People barely go out, they're always on their phones. So the best advice, like look for any of these Web3 um, communities, especially those educative communities, like where you educate people. Look for a way to partner with them. You could decide to say, oh, any of their programs that they're gonna be doing, you want to like um, come into it and see how you can support their growth. Trust me, from there, you like be more of like, should I say their key person? Whenever they have any activity that it is that they want to do, it is your brand that they'll put at the front. So let's, let's say, for example, BitGet. Now, let's say BitGet supports um, blockchain ladies DAO for whatever activity it is they are doing. Trust me, if Yvonne is going to be talking about a DAO, if she wants to make like, any point of interest to um, a trading firm, she would definitely want to talk about BitGet. And now, imagine someone who doesn't know anything about BitGet. You hear her talk about it. The next thing you do want to reach out to her later, like, what is BitGet? And you go and read more. Other members of her community, other members of her DAO, because they know that, oh, BitGet is a major supporter. They would want, and we all know that word of mouth spreads faster than anything. Imagine I'm here talking about this brand, and 10,000 people are listening to me. Before you go and pay for a TV ad, this time you're not even paying for an ad or something. You're just like supporting the community and they're already taking the name of your brand, like, so in, so, like they're taking it everywhere. And that's what Shiba they did. That's what Dogecoin they did. They do not have anything they are building. They don't have a utility. But the only reason why they're everywhere is because the members of their community, they believe in them, like, oh, they're making yes. money off this thing. And everywhere you go at that time on Twitter, you see Shiba Inu. Even who doesn't know about crypto is talking about Shiba Inu, and that is the power of a community. So if you need to build any products in the Web3 space, you need to understand that community is the key. They are the ones who would actually help to take your products, like, to far, like, take it far and wild. And I think to round up the session, the last question I would like, be asking to, I'll be asking all our panelists, like, tell us like, what you see as a future of Web3 in general and future potentials in the next coming years for everybody in all aspects, starting from Christian. Uh, I think we're just at the beginning. The, the, fu the future of <coughs> Web3 web is the antithesis of Web2. There's no such thing as a super app in Web3, but it is a community of, of, of communities. It's tools that allow you to build um, like Lego blocks, whatever end solution that you want uh, that can benefit you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I believe I, in the future, I believe Africa would play a huge role in Web3, even not even the future, in the present. Uh, we don't have, we have a lot of Africans using um, Web3 in small amounts, like sending cryptocurrencies. And I, I see a future where Africans are equally as consumers as producers. Uh, please follow us at Ngeni <laughs> on Twitter. We're working, we are increasing our devs. We want to scale to greater heights. Uh, we want to train more developers to produce more Web3 products. Yeah, and I head to the moon. <laughs> Thank you. I think Web3 is gonna be the most crucial rails to build community. The way that big brands will be marketing is totally gonna to be shifted by Web3. The way that small brands reach the consumers is totally gonna to be shifted by Web3. And just to give you a practical example, for instance, today, every time I meet someone, I have them scan this QR code, which gives them a pull-up and introduces them to the metaverse community where they can then benefit from everything that we're building, like our current meta, uh, metaverse production, in collaboration with the producers of Kate, Itania, or The Hunger Games. So things like these are what are gonna become the norm everywhere you go, anywhere you go. Big brands, small brands, small creators, big value is gonna be transmitted across the rails at our Web3. 
and key among that is how you build community and how that community benefits from, um, from whatever it is that you're building. Sure. Thank you. Sophie? Yeah, well, there is a, at least the feature I would like to see. Hopefully, it's not just wishful thinking, but uh, I see Web3 as like a, a very powerful weapon for much higher impact than what we are like touching today as technologists. I was explaining that to me, Web3 is probably a much more powerful weapon or tool for regional integration. Yeah. Um, because it's basically, it remove all the differences of currencies and frontiers when you want to do a regional trade. Yeah. I see the same impact in pretty much every sector, uh, beyond just the financial uh, sector. But that feature also requires us Africans to be less consumers and mm -hmm. more builders. Hopefully. Yeah, thank you. I good. Um, so I, I see, I was going to say I see more money coming to this space, but when you is it, and <laughs> that is almost non existent. But um, I, I've been interacting with a lot of um, developer communities, so I see much more talents coming to this space. Mm -hmm. um, with that, I see better products. Um, I think in the future, you are going to be using, those of you that are non Web3 natives, using Web3 products without even realizing that you're using Web3 products. Yeah. Yeah. That is the feature that I see for Web3. And uh, with the amazing talents that I meet with every day, I think that is coming very soon. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you very much. So my key take from this session is community is key in Web3. If you need to build anything in Web3 space, you should go to community. Like you should look for a community that you need to hold down, a strong Web3 community, and try to work with them. If you want to invest in Web3 ecosystem, right now is the perfect time because right now a lot of people are already packing up. Trust me, a lot of Web3 products they are done because they do not have a sustainable product to back them up. So right now, if you know you need to invest into anything, this is a very good time. For in the aspect of marketing, or for those who want to onboard businesses into the Web3 ecosystem already established Web3 systems, the best way is to reach out to Web2 products and leverage on the already made hype and see how you can help them transition into the space so that whatever it is that they are building, they bring it into, like, into the space. And, and of course, Web3 is decentralization. Everybody has the opportunity to do whatever it is that they want to do, like their voices are heard. Because right now, there's no longer any central body that is going to control you. It's going to say, oh, don't do this, or that's going to hold your money down. Like, I know, I, I was not supposed to say this, but bringing it down to the old FTX falls and everything, people would say centralized exchanges, they are worth it. But to me, I also say centralized exchanges between them and our traditional finance, there's no difference. So the best thing, get into the central, decentralized aspect of Web3 and learn how to use um, self-custodial wallets and self-custodial um, um, products, whereby you don't get affected in case of, let's say, any of all these um, exchanges or decentralized exchanges they form or they get into any problem. And so you don't lose your money at the end of the day. So thank you very much, our wonderful panelists. Before we leave, I don't know if anyone has any question for the panelists. At least one question. If there Sarah, is none. I think there was a question we didn't answer. I think we have a responsibility, me and you as the founder of Women in DEFA and Women in Blockchain Ladies Kenya. Um, John had asked how women can play a bigger role in Web3. Uh, I just want to encourage the women in the room who are looking to participate uh, in Web3. Uh, you don't have to... I know blockchain is, uh, has very few women because it's prioritized. Uh, it's focused on developer roles and trading roles, which are also male-dominated. But in blockchain, there are so many opportunities that come up. As I mentioned, Telegram moderator, there's marketing, there's so much you can do as a starting base. That's what I encourage my ladies. Don't shy away from it. There are so many opportunities yeah. you can do from at home. Uh, and you can, it's, it's very practical. Um, please also follow our communities, Kenya Blockchain Ladies Down and Women in DeFi. We try and push for Africa, women, African women involvement in, um, in Web3. Web3. So what I'll be adding to what she said is blockchain is not sexist. For those thinking, like, for those thinking blockchain is hard or because you're a female, you're not going to find your way. That is why it is decentralized. Right now, like, the blockchain is a space for everybody to come, like, come on board and come and build whatever it is, like, whatever innovation you have in mind. So if you're a female, like, don't shy away from it. It's not difficult. If you think you do not understand the technicalities, because, like they said, when people want to talk about the blockchain, they want to talk about crypto, they start talking about, like, 
start bringing out um, cumbersome words that people are unable to, like ambiguous, ambiguous statements that people are unable to understand. Look for any of these um, female communities, like learn from them, like, and then you see how to integrate your normal skills. Like, gone are those days where as a graphic designer or as a product designer, you're finding it difficult to get a job. In the Web3 ecosystem, it's so easy, trust me, because new products are coming up every day, and they're gonna be needing this talent. So if you're a female, and not just female, everyone in general, like, and you're finding it difficult to find your space, come into the Web3 ecosystem, and it's going to welcome you. So thank you very much, everyone, for listening to the session. Thank, thank you. you, not so fast, not so fast. Not so fast. Thank you so, so much, our panelists. We really, really appreciate you. Thank you. So, come on, let's appreciate them. Please. Thank you so, so, so much. It's been nice hearing from you, all of you. Quite an amazing conversation. I wish I could ask questions myself, but of course, we do not have a, uh, more time. I hope you get time to talk to them later on on the, uh, you know, on the sidelines. But thank you so much. Let me just appreciate you individually. Wilfred Odero from Metaversal. A clap for him. Tofin, Tofin Kama from Massey Cops Ventures. Thank you so, so much. Yvonne Kagondu from Kenya. Great. Um, Harrison Obiefule, Bitget. Thank you. Christian Dufus from Phone Bank. And finally, the moderator, um, Sarah Idahosa from uh, Women in DeFi. All right. You may exit the stage. Thank you so, so, so much. Remember to tag Africa Tech Sam. Oh, one photo. Okay.